bad. But what about these times? What's the state of the relationship now between the government and the and the church? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes you have to be careful because you can get you can uh, you can see things in a bad light or good light. Mm-hmm. But uh, no doubt, from my viewpoint, I think that uh, maybe, and I, and I hope that isn't just because, you know, as I get older, I see things in a more uh, negative way. <laughs> I, I, I hope that's not true. But I do think that uh, that I can see some similarities developing in mm-hmm. how antagonistic sometimes our government is getting toward Christianity. Sure, I, I see that. Yeah, <clears throat> seems like the two are becoming. More and more at odds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, seems that way. I don't, you, know. you know, of course, I know we've got a big movement on to uh, rewrite history. <laughs> right. But but if you look at the early history of our, our country and our founding fathers, and and I know, I mean, I can go back and read a lot of those people. Some of them were atheists. Yeah, right. you know, uh, some of them were non-believers. Some of them were believers. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> really, I mean, there's no doubt that a lot of the founding principles were. Christian principles, yeah, at least yeah. compatible with it. With, at least right. compatible, and with they it. Un, they fully understood that. No yeah. matter you know, no matter what their either religious background is or their lack thereof a religious background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's no doubt those founding principles mm-hmm. uh, were you know not at odds with the church. So have we strayed away from that? Uh, you know, it's hard for me not to say that we mm-hmm. have, in some point. You know, part of that I think is just because of the values that we hold is. Christians now are becoming maybe uh, not the popular view. Is right. that the way to put it? Well, I think you made the statement Sunday. We were talking. You know, you said we're a uh, we're no longer. People like to say we're a, a Christian nation, yeah. but I think what you said and the way you yeah. said it really actually phrases it the right way. We're a nation of Christians. Yeah. And, and I didn't. I coined that. I read that from somebody, right. which I think is true. We shouldn't. We shouldn't get up and say this is a. Right. Our government is a Christian government. Right. You know, we're we're a nation of Christians, right. and so that should influence the government. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. It, I, I think one of the tragedies of democracy is that we feel like uh, whatever the majority feel, mm-hmm. then that's the right way to be. Yeah. And uh, you know, the majority sometimes can be let off. Look, well, th- Look at what happened to the world before the flood. Right. Mm. This you thought know? just came to my mind, Cole, based mm-hmm. on something you just said. You know, I think for Christians, we've been made to to feel silent, yeah. you know, and not speak yeah. up. I think so. Yeah. No doubt about that. Yeah. I don't know where that comes from. Yeah. Uh, maybe because our views are are at odds now with majority i don't know i don't know if that's true well sometimes i think we've gone back to romans in that way i think we've gone back to romans 13 as christians and read this and said you know uh uh, we don't need to be uh uh forceful Mm -hmm. right you know we need to be uh respectful of the government and we do but we can be respectful and uh uh be disagreeing Mm -hmm. with you know, right. things, you know, and, and I know we're in an age right now where everybody says, you know, we're, we're so divided and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't understand, you know, there's nothing wrong with having different views and ideals. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. we can discuss those. And I think that division though, it, I think there's a, we divide on, on singular issues yeah. rather than a multitude of issues. And yeah. I know we're, we're going to get in some, some of those things that what, what people should consider, you know, down, later on in our discussion, but you know, I think that's, you know, we're, we're more similar than we want, but people just want to elevate those division issues. Yeah. And that's what, that's what gets most attention. Yeah. To your point, Steve, where you said <clears throat> we seem to be more silent. Uh, I didn't read the rest of Martin Luther King's quote there where he talked about how the church uh, needs to be the conscience of the state. He said, if the church does not re- recapture its prophetic zeal, it will become an irrelevant social club without moral or spiritual authority. Yeah, again, he which, understood it. Which that's come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't you need know, to be silent. You know, we need to be zealful for <clears throat> what God taught. Right. Uh, you know, we need to be zealful for what Paul taught us about government in Romans 13. Yeah. And, you know, and, and press our government to be what God wants our government to be. All right. Well, I'll have to admit, you know, until I started doing this study, you know, in preparation of this, I, I guess I really, I, I knew it exists. You know, I knew government ordained uh, or God ordained government. 
but not to the to the extent of 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 what his real ideal would been in this situation. But you know, I think you know we we we're great at teaching you know to learn this Bible phrase or this you know Bible verse. I think it's something you know our young kids need to really have a, a complete understanding. I know we've talked about civics in school, but I don't. Yeah. I think we need to Absolutely. have our young kids to be uh, pressed upon that you know government is is ordained by God. Well, you brought up a point earlier, and I think that's what you're getting to is we're victims of our uh, surroundings and in, in our teaching, mm-hmm. and and we've basically been taught or we've bought into maybe the ideal that well you've got government over here. You got church over here, mm-hmm. and never the two, you know, have anything to do with each right. other. And so we can't, uh, you know, we've been silent when right. it comes about comes about talking about government and what God ordained as government, because we say, well, you know, we're we're talking about spiritual things here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, All right, right. But but I think we're going to, as we discuss this and get into it, we're going to see that God had a spiritual plan for the world. Right. Mm-hmm. A redemp- We've talked about the narrative that God had of redemption. And the government's part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, part of that purpose. We got a popular phrase in our nation separation of church and state. <laughs> yeah. But I think we may have got that backwards. Yeah. Uh, the idea of that statement was to keep the state out of the church. Right. That's right. Not to yeah. keep the church yeah, out of the state. I don't think there's any constitutional that, that phrase is necessarily, in, it's in, not no, in the Constitution no, that way, you no. know, at all. Well, it, it says that the government shall not establish any that's religion. Right. That, that's what it says. But it doesn't say that the government can't have religious right. morals yeah. right and yeah. as a part of our government as a part of I mean, when we vote or when we take part in our government we don't check our faith before we do that that's, that's right. right yeah